Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. Fender has always been a pretty progressive company with who they adopt into their brand of who gets a signature guitar and who doesn't. And recently they just adopted two new female artists and I thought we would check one of them out. And naturally, I chose the one that had the coolest finish. So I'm sorry, Tash Sultana. I didn't really like your signature guitar enough to buy it and review it. But you can check that thing out here. It's just kind of a red Stratocaster with a matching red headstock. It's an HSS setup. But the one that we're going to do today is her Stratocaster. Or I guess you could say Stratocast her. <laughs> And if you're not familiar with her, she's a R&B singer. I mean, she can play guitar fantastically. I mean, you can check out this Jimmy Kimmel video. She can really nail some guitar solos and stuff. But unfortunately, R&B, it's not my music style. So I'll let you go ahead and check out some other videos where she's playing her own music. I know Fender has a great one that they just did with her. It's got like 1.4 million views, so it must speak to a lot of people. But her signature guitar, oh man. This I'm really excited to see because they finished it in what they're calling Chrome Glow. So I'm really excited to see this in person. So without any further ado, let's get this bad girl unboxed. The moment of truth. Oh yes. <laughs> this is cool. I mean, I think it's what, a made in Mexico guitar? Yeah. And it's kind of expensive at 1100 bucks. But how can you turn away such a beautiful guitar? So what you kind of got going on here? Oh my goodness. I wasn't even expecting the anodized aluminum pick guard. So you guys remember that modern flying V, how it has that rainbow effect to it? This guitar has that, but its base coat is silver. Now, unfortunately I'm seeing mine must've got dinged during shipping or something. That's rather unfortunate right out of the box. Whether you like or know about her or not, I think this is something that everybody can appreciate. Wouldn't it have been cool if they would have finished the back of the neck in this too? Just have the whole thing look like it's an aluminum Stratocaster like they did do once before. But on top of this, it's got noiseless pickups, which some people aren't a huge fan of. But the other thing that makes this special is the fact that we get, uh, it looks like abalone inlay. So special finish, special pickups, Kind of a special pick guard in a roundabout way. Cool inlays, matching headstock. I mean, what is there not to like about the Her Stratocaster? And heck, I'm even seeing stock strap lock buttons. This signature guitar is pretty well specced in my opinion. But hey, let's go ahead and throw this thing on the workbench, take an individual look at its parts and specs, and then we'll get onto that playing demo. Inside the Her Stratocaster. Taking this thing apart, it's like something doesn't look right here. What's different? We don't have all the shielding paint in the cavity. And I think that has to come down to the noiseless pickups don't necessarily need it. I'm not 100% sure on that. Maybe the pick guard acts as shielding. But here you can see how the body is routed. You can actually modify this with humbuckers in the neck and bridge positions if you wish to, but you can only get away with the single coil in the middle without additional routing. But there we can see a barcode and the exposed alder body. Now you can see there are some areas where they probably could have uh, sanded that down a little bit better to get all these little shavings. But for the most part, I mean, as far as like the bottom goes, that's really clean routes. There's just a few areas that they could have cleaned up if they really cared. A beautiful alder wood grain here. As far as the pickups go, they just call these the vintage noiseless pickups. Nothing really too fancy else to call them. But you can see some sort of a numbering system right there. And here's the barcode on the back of the pick guard. Now this is kind of nice to see. You get CTS pots 250k and just a regular five-way switch. It's really loud. I mean, listen to this thing. I think it has to do with the style of switch that they used, as well as this metal pick guard. It just creates such a echoing sound. I mean, it's even worse once it's all screwed in. As far as functionality, I mean, yeah, it's fine. It's going to work. I don't see any branding on the switch, but I do see some numbers here. So I don't believe it's a nice switch craft or anything. So maybe that's one part you might consider upgrading if you're annoyed by the noise that it makes. But the outside of each pickup just reads noiseless. As far as pickup readings, we get about 9.95 in the bridge. These two together, about five. Just your middle, 9.88. These two, about five and just your neck, 9.8. And here's a quick look inside the output jack route. Nothing too fancy here. 
and the bridge itself is a vintage style with individual saddles on each, and they're all branded Fender. Now, if you're wondering what this is, that's just the sticker residue left over from the sticker that they put over top of that. But this is a more vintage style Stratocaster. You do adjust the truss rod down here. Now, it looks like you just might be able to get one of those Stumac tools in there so you don't have to take the neck off if you want to adjust it. But it is one of those kind of pain in the butt styles, in my opinion. All good information to know if you're considering buying one of these. But take a look at this chrome glow finish. Underneath the bright lights, that rainbow effect doesn't really seem to happen, but you know, in regular lighting situations, it seems to be all right. It's just kind of a cool metal looking strat. Maybe they should have went with some metal pickup covers and switch tip and knobs really made this thing look like a UFO. <laughs> That'd actually be pretty cool if somebody wanted to turn this into like a spacecraft type thing. But anyways, again, you get the locking Schaller strap buttons stock from the factory, and they do give you the counterparts in the gig bag. And I did look up the spec sheet. Apparently, yes, this is real abalone. That is super colorful. I don't think I've ever seen abalone quite like this, but it's really nice to see something that's not just white plastic or black plastic on a fender. So I think that's a great spec just on its own that they put it on there. Kind of reminds me of like a nail polish type thing. And you got some cool wood grain on this maple fretboard. So the body has a poly finish that's gloss, whereas the neck and fretboard are completely satin. I am noticing a little bit of fret sprout on this particular example. Is that necessarily Fender's fault? Uh, not necessarily. It really depends on the shipping conditions and where they've been stored. So maybe just check that out before you purchase one if you care about that. It's really not bad enough you're going to notice it. As far as our radius, it's nine and a half inches, and they're calling this a mid-60s C neck profile. It's pretty rounded, but not too crazily thin either. Let's go ahead and grab those dimensions. We've got a first fret neck depth of 0.86, and I bet that'll stay pretty consistent. Yeah, 0.88 by the 12th. And our synthetic bone nut measures 1.65 inches, and then by the 12th it increases to 2.03. I went ahead and lubricated the nut if you're curious what those black marks are. Now this is something I always get after Fender about, not having a perfectly straight line down here when they do the painted headstock caps. This one's not too bad until you look at it at this particular angle. You can see it kind of curves. This will help you slightly visualize that. But as far as looking this way, it actually looks pretty darn good, so I will commend them on that. They've almost got it down pat. The only other thing that I see that I don't think necessarily affects the guitar, but I think you should know about, is the strings are actually digging into the finish right here. You can hear my nail catch on those areas. So that's something to know about, but beautiful headstock on this thing. I like matching headstock strats, that's just how I am. And it's the vintage style tuners. I mean, this whole thing is very vintage inspired, I would say, even going as far as the truss rod as we were talking about earlier. I wonder if she did that for historical accuracy, like she's a fender buff, or if she just didn't want an ugly truss rod cap right there. But anyways, it just says Fender Stratocaster. There's no her up here or anything. Now that I've got it all strung up and put back together, that's when I realized the neck actually has going up. So it causes a whole bunch of fret buzzing. So this has to be one of the worst factory setups I've ever had on a Fender guitar. Kind of let down by that, but as far as the fret work itself, it seems to be good once you straighten that neck out, but it's just too much of a hassle for me right now to fix that. But anyways, moving on to the back side of this instrument, you get the anodized back plate as well and there's no shielding or anything back here. The block is non-magnetic, which means you could upgrade this to get better sustain and whatnot. As far as the back of the guitar, just that one ding that we kind of saw right here. But other than that, I'm not seeing anything too crazy here. You get your normal cutaway, and the neck plate itself actually has HER. And if you wonder what that stands for, it's have everything revealed. This is the only thing that has her name on it, and it feels like if you wanted to, you could scratch that out. You could also get rid of the fender if you didn't want that there. And here's what the back of the neck looks like. I am noticing that the nut is just a little bit too long here. You can see where it could have been tapered down a little bit more. That can catch your fingers as you're playing. And this one was made in Mexico, 2020, with our vintage style tuners. So overall, I mean, it's an okay guitar, but there's definitely some QC things on this one that could have been better. It needs a professional setup. So straight out of the box for $10.99, kind of disappointed in this one. All said and done, this one weighs 7 pounds, 14.7 ounces. Let's go ahead and discover its tones.
Okay, so it's really not like most Stratocasters. It's kind of got that whole noiseless thing going on. It's a trade-off. You kind of lose some of that spanky attack. I really notice it on that bridge. I mean, listen to this. <laughs> just kind of sounds dead to me, to be honest. But I do really enjoy the neck pickup. As far as the middle position goes. Just very mellow guitar in general. That's all I really want to play on this thing. Here's that neck and middle again. And now the bridge and middle. So I guess it really does kind of fit her R&B style. So if you're trying to do like a bunch of rock solos on this, maybe not the best guitar for that if you're looking for regular Stratocaster tones. So definitely well suited towards her and I guess, you know, it makes sense. It's her signature guitar, right? Let's go ahead and try it with some distortion now. <laughs> Let's try that neck pickup out. Let's try that middle position now. Stratocaster that's ever been made. I would much rather prefer regular single coils, I think. But this is a nice looking guitar. So I think after like a full gone over setup on this one, it would have been just fine. But I think I kind of got a dog on this one, unfortunately for this Stratocaster's documentation sake. But I hope this video kind of helped you know some pros and cons to this instrument if you were considering purchasing one. It's not like just any regular Stratocaster. It's kind of got its own unique persona and sounds to it. So thank you Troglodytes for tuning into this episode of the Trogly's Guitar Show. I hope you enjoyed learning about her Stratocaster and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.